guess what? This is Law & Order SVU season four, episode 15, Pandora. We're day drinking, bitches. We open up and there's a pissed off couple because he's run out of gas. It's not my fault, the gas gauge is broken. Can't believe you didn't bring your cell phone. They're parked right behind another car, so they're gonna ask them for help. This chick climbs in to make sure nobody's in it, but they hear something in the trunk. This acting is like a 5.8 out of 10. Trunk pops open. Call the police! There's a woman with a whole bunch of stab wounds and something Harry Potter style is going on with her mouth. Jump ahead and Benson and Stabler are at the scene getting filled in by the cops. The victim got clocked a couple times by a tire iron before he raped her. Well, did the victim say anything? No, because her mouth is super glued shut. Benson's gonna ride in the ambulance just to see if she can get more information. Stabler stays behind and is inspecting the car. Registered to Meredith McGrath and it looks like there's some recent damage on the bumper? Maybe he bumped into her and then when she got out, he attacked her. Detective, we found this in a nearby trash. It's a wallet and still has 80 bucks in it and the car registration to Meredith McGrath. No keys, no license. Wait, her license with her address on it? Holy shit, Stabler's got a hunch. What's the address on that registration? They bust over to Meredith's home address and the cops are already there. What's going on? Some neighbor heard a commotion, but pretend the cops got there. There was already a victim, Roger McGrath. Now we meet cocky homicide investigator Bishop. And when he sees special victims unit, he's like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he didn't get raped. <laughs> Cause men can't get raped. Well, his wife was about an hour ago. Bishop's smile fades real fast. So we think he attacked her first and then used the keys to get into the house. Did he take anything when he was here? Yeah, the hard drive. Ripped it right out of the computer thing. But he missed this. Pulls out this huge laptop. Obviously Bishop wants to work the case. I'll let you know if I need your help. <laughs> Just then, Stabler gets a phone call. <sighs> Damn it. Meredith, the victim, is dead. Back from the intro, Olivia's caught a different case at the hospital. So she's out this episode. The new info is that they found fingerprints at the scene of the rape and at the scene of the murder. They match each other, but they're not in the system. Kraken's got a hunch about that super glue situation. He sent in a message. Maybe she talked when she shouldn't have. We know that she was coming back from work when it happened, so let's start there. Munch and Stabler head over to the New York Public Library. And Meredith's coworker is saying that, no, everybody loved her. Are you dating anybody at the library? She's like, nah. 80% of us are females and the guys here are butt ugly. I mean, look at me. Okay, was somebody jealous of her for some reason? Maybe a big promotion? No, the opposite. She almost got fired a couple of months ago. Super distracted, took a bunch of time off, and apparently she changed her email address like seven or eight times. Last bit of information that they get from this library ago is that that laptop, that was her work laptop. The Stabler's got to bust into homicide and ring Bishop's bell. I'm gonna need that laptop that belonged to my victim. Oh, the lab's not done with them, so I do have some info off of those CD-ROMs. What was it? Child sex abuse material. Hundreds of images. Please pause for dick measuring contest. When were you gonna tell me you had this information? I'm gonna tell you if my victim is a perv? Well, this shit belongs to my victim. Okay, fine. Let's go down to the tower lab and see what was on the laptop. Guess what it is? Yeah, tons more child sex abuse material. Two different girls. One who's like young, eight or nine. And the other has gotta be like 14 or 15. Protocol is to send all this information over to the FBI so they can use facial recognition on the kids. They were from a guy whose username is Nick Too Shy with a two. She not only saved his emails, his photos, but also their internet chats. Chats, what are they talking about? Lab guy says, she just seems to be trolling for some more sex abuse material. I read a couple and I felt like puking. So Stabler and Bishop jump back to the SVU precinct. Stabler is on the phone and and Bishop is checking out a picture of Olivia. Ooh, this is your partner? Does she date? Yeah, tons of guys. Bad news is they can't figure out Nick Tushai's IP address. But in the meantime, Bishop is reading through her chat. This one, she's asking for 700 more photos to spend an hour with her son. Stabler's like, hang on. She doesn't have a son. He's starting to put the pieces together and Bishop is still oblivious. Let's think about this. She saves her chats changes her name to love to cheer, pretends to be a 14 year old girl, never offers anything illegal until they bring it up. Huh? So it sounds like she is a, a sicko, an FBI informant. Informant, that's what I was gonna say. When they bring this info to the lab guy, he says, yeah, 
That makes a lot of sense. They also found a Trojan horse virus on her laptop, which means this Nick Too Shy motherfucker was spying on every keystroke. He found out she was an informant and then tracked her down to kill her. Then he went over and stole the evidence that she'd been building against him. So it turns out Meredith, the informant, was sending all of her information to Claudia Williams. Stabler's like, that's not FBI, that's a US attorney. So we jump to Claudia Williams' office and she's my new goal in life. Claudia says that Meredith was taking down pedophiles vigilante style before they even met her. She brought that shit to us. And in the last year, she's helped put away five different pedophiles. Believe me, I wanna know who did this as much as you do. Stabler, who thinks nobody can possibly care as much as he does. Well, I want all the files that you have and don't even tell me it's gonna compromise your investigation. Claudia whips out a folder and in it is is that 14 year old girl. He's Ron Meredith's laptop. Her name is Mia Van Wagener. She's from Queens and she's been missing for two weeks. Her photos didn't show up until after she went missing. She got kidnapped and Meredith found out about it. Sounds like a motive for murder to me. The next day at the precinct, Bishop's there again. And today he brought Stabler coffee. Reagan says, you're becoming a real fixture around here thinking about transferring. Now nah, thanks, I like my victims dead. So apparently when Mia Van Wagner left home, she stole some money. So they just marked her as a runaway. But we're gonna talk to her mom real quick. Mrs. Van Wagner, does Mia spend a lot of time online? No, why? We tell her about the pictures and assure her that she doesn't want to see them. Mom is horrified and says that she doesn't use the internet here, but she does have a friend. Samantha Gilligan, but the police already talked to her. Yeah, well, we're still gonna talk to this brat. I don't know. <laughs> Mia is so mature for her age. Bishop goes totally rogue and whips out one of those awful pictures. Does it look like she's having a good time? Stabler's like, put it away. Ah, just, okay, fine, she has a boyfriend. Walking out, Stabler's like, why the fuck did you show her that? She was lying her ass off. So your solution is to traumatize her? Hey, we got what we came for. I don't want you jumping on my game like that again. Are we clear? Okay, so they finally run down the IP address and it's a just just a touch out of their jurisdiction. Another state, another country, Prague, as in the Czech Republic, run by Claudia, and she says that the US Embassy has confirmed that the sender of those emails is Eric Tassig, a German national that's been living in Prague for the last two years, but they can't arrest him without proof that he has the girl. Uh, and so here's the other thing, Mia Van Wagner, she's never been issued a passport, so how the fuck did she get out of this country? We jump to the precinct and we've got a whole bunch of pictures up on the board. We've got Mia Van Wagner, she's with Eric Tassig, but we think Nick Too Shy is a different dude. Probably the one who murdered Meredith, maybe the one that snuck Mia out of the country. We also still don't know who this like eight year old girl is. Quick run the LUDs on Mia's phone and it looks like she called a copy shop. Girl who's working at the copy shop takes one look at a picture of Mia and says, uh, that's Carrie, Ron Cowley's daughter. He's right back there if you wanna talk to him. We sure as fuck do. He's lying his ass off, so they bring him down immediately. They start accusing him of raping and murdering Meredith. And Bishop goes all ham hock on this guy. You're a little worm, you stupid motherfucker. Then the door opens and in walks Claudia. Take a walk, detective. Ronnie thinks he's in the clear because he's dealing with a woman, but she starts asking him questions that she already knows the answers to. Do you still have custody over your daughter? Do you apply for a fake passport using her birth certificate. Fraudulently obtaining a US passport is a serious offense, Mr. Cowley. And if you think the NYPD has been tough on you, you just wait till you're dealing with the fucking feds. Stabler's just sitting back in awe, trying to think about baseball. Ron comes clean and says, yeah, he did help her get out of the country, but he definitely didn't rape and murder anybody. He doesn't know the younger girl and his prints don't match the crime scenes. And in a surprise twist, Stabler now is going to Prague. Well, this is turning into a full length feature film, isn't it? So we jump to Prague and there's Stabler meeting up with Kate Logan. She's the Europol agent assigned to this case and she's got cheekbones for days. Unfortunately, there's been a development. When they raided Tassig's apartment, they had been tipped off and they're fucking gone. Her dumb old friend emailed her. She is so grounded. So Kate Logan takes Stabler on a very depressing stroll through downtown Prague. Every week, 10,000 Germans come here because sex work is half price. Pink curtains in the windows mean you can get a kid under 10. Blue curtains mean it's a boy for like the equivalent of 17 US dollars. That's Fuck. And you do nothing to stop it? Well, Europol has no jurisdiction and the cops have no incentive to change it. You know, because there's so much money to be made. But then they get a credible tip and they head to a bustling city market, stake it out and pretty soon, <gasps> 
There's Mia. There will probably be an obvious as hell as usual, and she spots them. Eric, I think I'm being tailed. Cue the chase scene. But remember, this is Europe, so Stabler first has to run through a huge crowd of pigeons, kicking them out of the way. Music's going crazy, and Stabler catches up to Mia. But Eric takes off. And afterwards, Kate Logan's not soups pumped that he let Eric get away. <sighs> I get it. It's easier to catch the bad guy than uh, deal with the victim. They're gonna try and get Mia to tell where Tasik is, but she thinks they're in love, so good fucking luck. I know he loves me and I don't care if you don't understand. Mia, he sells kids for sex. We've seen the pictures. What pictures? The ones on the internet. He starts bawling and is like, please, please, my mom can't see those pictures. If we find Tasik, we can try and get them down. And that's all it takes. She spills where his business is. And when they bust down the door and nab him, it looks like business is pretty good. Got a whole room full of packages ready to be sent out. Gross. So now Kate Logan and Stabler are gonna go interrogate Tassig in like a dungeon of a castle. He claims in an incredibly believable accent, he's done nothing wrong. And he doesn't even see Stabler like rolling up his sleeves in the background. Boom, elbow to the nose. You can't hurt me, you're an American. But we're not in America. Punch to the throat, throw on the table. Okay, he's seen the little girl, her name is Amy. And back at the embassy, they're tracking Tassig's computer and they find the website that Amy's on. You need a password to get in, it's called Amy's Secret. Those passwords are managed by a password company. The company's called Private Code, and this is shady shit. They make sure you're anonymous, and they make the charges look like they're for a fly fishing magazine, and they operate right out of New York City. Well, detective, it looks like you're going home. As soon as Stabler walks into the precinct door, guess who's sitting at his desk? Bishop. I gotta take you down to the feds. You won't believe what you started. There is a brand new bustling task force. It was all set up by Claudia Williams to deal with all the shit that they found on Tassig's computer. Claudia's there giving him the deets. We're looking at 15 individual sites hosting 400,000 individual images. And like a bajillion people are subscribing to this shit. We're going to take them all down. You've opened Pandora's box, detectives. Name of the episode, everybody drink. Next up is to bust in and take down this middle-aged Baptist looking couple running this private password company. Put down the leftovers. We don't know what was on the website. We just give the password. You don't know what's on child.rape. Shut up. So the best part about this is this old couple, they keep immaculate records. We have names, we have emails, we have addresses. And when Stabler looks up Nick Too Shy, we get a name. Nicholas Taylor. We even got an address with his credit card. Print that shit out. Bishop and Stabler head over to this dude's place and knock on the door. Door opens and behind it is the little girl they've been looking for. Stabler gets all misty eyed. Are you Amy? She says, yeah, and her dad's upstairs sleeping. He walks into this dude's bedroom and there he is fucking fast asleep. He puts the gun against the back of this dude's head, but instead of shooting him, he just clocks him and wakes him up. Here's my daughter. Stabler grabs him, just shaking with rain. Where's your daughter? Like you give a damn. We bring him in as pretty much an open and shut case. It's Nick's prints at the crime scene and he's got like a bajillion images documenting the abuse. He gets all manifesto-y and talking about being a pedophile. There's literally hundreds of thousands of us and we're never going away. But you are, stupid fucker. So in our last scene, we jump to the bar where Bishop's trying to get Stabler to have one more beer with him. I gotta get home and make sure my kids still know what I look like. I am a dad. Is that why you do this job? Part of it. It's a tough gig. Guess you really gotta love it. No, you've really gotta hate it. Screen goes black, Dick Wolf. Somebody was proud of that finishing line. And that was Law & Order SVU Season 4, Episode 15. Jum jum. <laughs>